Hi everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Yep, we're sitting inside the XL7, it's raining outside. We got called in here on this 2012 Chevy Volt. And customer complaint is, check engine light is on and there's a warning on the dash that says the high voltage EV battery is not charging. So I did a full code scan and we have two codes in the uh, HPCM2 hybrid powertrain control module it says P0AA6 hybrid EV battery voltage system isolation lost and system isolation coolant level sensor fault hybrid EV battery charging system disabled. So if this code sets, then this code sets because it disables the charging of the battery because the system isolation is lost. So first time for me working on one of these Chevy Volts, 90,000 miles on it. Um, let's do some research on these trouble codes, see if there's any interesting information. Where do we begin our diagnosis? All right, so there's a TSB on this exact issue. Vehicle will not charge in hybrid loss of isolation with DTC P0A6 and or P1FFF. <clears throat> Those are the two codes that we have. This one and this one. So, potential causes to consider when evaluating the vehicle are one, a loss of hybrid EV battery pack coolant, external or internal to the hybrid EV battery pack, or a loss of high voltage isolation within the battery cells or battery sections themselves. Hmm. Recommendations. Isol locate the isolation test resistance that is located in the HPCM2 data list under data display and note the current value on the repair order. Also note the isolation resistance from the freeze frame records. Um, here. Okay, perfect. So we have to start by not clearing codes but actually going to freeze frame and seeing what this resistance was, isolation resistance, when the code set. Inspect the high EV battery pack coolant level by doing both of the following. Note the coolant level is low in the underhood reservoir. Remove the drain plug for the battery to see if the water coolant drains out, indicating coolant leak inside the battery pack. Interesting. And this battery pack. lives, I don't know if I get my internet back, under the car, if you look at component views, oh, let's see, control valve, coolant pump, let's go back a couple, here, here it's under the car, so it's in the transmission tunnel, I guess, here's all the electronics, and it has coolant going through it. And it's a GM, so what possibly could go wrong? <laughs> um, there's the layout. And then the actual code description here, the P0AA6, hybrid EV battery voltage system isolation lost. Uh, it's equipped with a monitor, and the purpose is to test resistance between the high voltage positive and negative direct current DC bus and chassis ground. It has a special feature that tests with an AC signal on the high voltage system, monitors its amplitude. A reduced amplitude return signal indicates a loss of resistance to chassis ground. The isolation monitor method is sometimes referred to as an active isolation monitor. Okay. It runs when all the contactors are open. That's key. So, conditions for setting the DTC. The battery energy control module has detected active isolation resistance less than 325 kilo ohms. Interesting. So, let's go to the scanner. Go to the live data. Well, we can look at the freeze frame for this code right here. And this is the beauty of Bluetooth scanners. The car is over there in the garage, keys on, and we can look at anything we want to right here. So 
on page four of freeze frame, it says isolation test resistance, 225 kilo ohms. And the minimum is 325 kilo ohms. Okay, uh, what's the, you know, if the test just ran again, is this, when you say DTC display, this thing says passed and failed. And it's currently locked out, so it's not charging this battery. So my question is, currently, did this test pass? So data stream, I'll just pick one of these. Battery pack isolation test status. So, and there's a test resistance. So right now it says isolation test status passed. Six, um, isolation test resistance 3000 kilo ohms. So basically, I'm assuming it's good, open circuit. Now the owner says when the, this code sets, it's been on for about three weeks. Um, obviously it's been wet outside and the car's been sitting for a few months before the code set. So is there a possibility that there's some condensation uh, inside the battery pack that the coolant level was fine? Um, and right now the test, you know, it passed the most recent test. He's been driving it for a while. So, I mean, it's the car is drivable, it's just not charging the e, uh, high voltage battery. In the TSB, it says, you know, check the coolant level. He said he checked that as fine. Removing the drain plug for the battery will that involves raising the car up. Um, if any moisture is found during the drain plug inspection, contact the GM Technical Assistance Center. Wow. Very important. If the coolant level in the reservoir is at a proper level and there's no coolant or water drain from the battery from the drain plug inspection for 2011-2014, program the HPCM2 and the BECM with the latest calibration. If the DT sets again, review freeze frame information again and follow the SI diagnostics. So, my question is, if we don't find any problems with this, with this car right now, do we do this programming or do we just let the owner drive it until the next time this happens? And then we'll say, hey, you know, bring it to the shop because we need to lift the car up. We need to do this inspection uh, with the, you know, for water inside the battery. And then if, it, if all those things pass, we can reprogram the module. I think that's the best plan of attack. So I'm just going to reset the codes for now and give it back to the customer and basically say, um, if it happens again, you got to bring it over for uh, further diagnostics. So that's it for now. Um, there's a follow-up. We'll, uh, we'll do that later. So I tried clearing the trouble codes, and this code is not being cleared. It says current, system isolation, coolant level, sensor fault, hybrid EV battery charging system disabled. The car still is still fussing. So my question is, if we go back, and see P1 F one F F E there it is P1 F F F Coolant level sensor, coolant level sensor tested. Coolant surge tank, yep. It's a two stage switch which changes state when the level of the coolant pack and surge tank reaches approximately 100 milliliters. Changes when the battery coolant level and surge tank gets low. The low level state is the lower resistance state of the sensor. Normal level state is higher resistance. So it's either on or off, basically. The hybrid EV powertrain control module uses the coolant level sensor to determine the control of the charging operation. Okay. Uh, once DTC is set, the DTC will not run again until a clear code command is sent. Conditions for setting the DTC. So if this code is set, this code will be set. Type A DTC. Yep. We'll only clear the clear code command. We'll 
will not clear go to history with ignition cycles will only clear with a clear code command I tried it it did not clear uh, yep I verified that the hybrid EV battery cooling system is full <laughs> in order to clear the P1FFF the K114B hybrid EV powertrain control module 2 may have to be programmed even though the module contains a current calibration level that's nuts so you have to program the module that's crazy okay so basically we have to do this again and we we have to actually do the programming to clear this code you can't just clear it and send the customer on his way that sucks for the customer but that's what we have to do uh, before programming anything I want to try this in the special functions reset functions hybrid EV battery contactor open reasons reset and right here contact open reasons we have hybrid EV battery system pre-charge time too long yes and shutdown mode yes so let's reset those refer to the service manual for instructions Reset. Device limit exceeded. High voltage interlock circuit and contactor not open. Oh. Okay. There's no way around it. You gotta pay GM money to program this thing. <laughs> that's too funny so I actually have TechLine Connect installed in this little laptop and uh, all you need is the Bosch Master Tech 2 pass through all right here we go pass through is connected and we're gonna jump right into SPS2 mm -mm -mm. So we have to program this K114B and the K16 modules So we're going to reprogram Next. Mm -hmm. There's a K16 and the K, what was it, the 114? K114B. Battery energy control module. There it is. K114B hybrid powertrain control module 2. Next. Um, coolant surge tank update includes new anti tamper bracket on cap. Well, let's see. Here's our surge tank. So this is for the engine, this is for the hybrid system. This is the anti-tamper thing. So it is updated. Obviously the coolant level is perfect. There and there. So we're gonna select with. Mm 
Next. Yes. Next, current calibration is 2129, new calibration, da, 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 da. so I'm going to control, print screen this. And then say next. Start programming. It's, it says even if it's the most current calibration, still do it. Writing the ECU. It might take a little while. All right, vehicle processing data. And let's finish that. And then the TSB also said reprogram the K16 module. <clears throat> and that's battery energy control module. Let's see if we can do that one at the same time. So we don't have the warning anymore. Okay, next. See, new software addresses the isolation issue found on the Gen 1. So, let's just go ahead and do that. All right, so programming is complete. We got no warnings. Can we shift it into reverse? Yes. Shift it in the drive, yes. Will it go? See, check engine light is still on. So let's get the regular scanner out. Scan it for codes one more time. See if, see if it's happy or if it's good, you know, or if it's not happy. All right, looks like good news. Everything's green on the scanner. Everything's green on the dashboard. It's a very green car. So, shift in the reverse. Car goes back. Shift in forward. Car goes forward. So I'll give it back to the owner and tell him drive it. And if this problem reoccurs, then we'll actually, you know, check the battery for moisture or whatever. But how about that? To clear the code on this car, you have to reprogram the module. That's ridiculous. Uh, so it's going to cost the owner a, a programming fee just to <laughs> clear these trouble codes. But that's the way GM uh, operates. And hopefully the car will be fixed, at least for a while. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time. So the owner said when this problem was present, he couldn't charge it from the wall. So this is a, this is a special charger that came with the car. John, yep. is that okay? And then it plugs in right here. And if the green light is on, that means green is good. So it's charging, and hopefully it'll stay happy.